The 10 concepts I'm about to mention in this video will be essential to give you the foundation required in order to solve or jump into more complex data structures and algorithms. As a software engineer, you must know these concepts to understand this field of engineering better. And no doubt these shall also help you a lot in cracking coding interviews. So pay attention and make sure to master these. The first one of course is arrays. Arrays are important in data structure and algorithms because they allow us to store and access data efficiently. They provide a way to access elements directly by their position. You can think of an array as a numbered shelf where each element has a specific place. This makes it quick to find and work with any element in the array. Elements in an array are stored together in memory, and because of that, it's faster to work with them. Imagine you have a room full of books arranged in a particular order. If you know the position of a book, you can find it immediately without searching through the entire room. Similarly, with arrays, you can quickly access or modify elements without spending too much time. They are handy for storing different types of data, such as numbers, names, or even images. Arrays serve as a fundamental building block for implementing other data structures. Many advanced data structures such as dynamic arrays, queues, stacks, heaps, and matrices are constructed using arrays as their underlying structure. In number 2, we have stacks. Stacks represent a simple yet powerful way of organizing and managing data. Just like a stack of plates, where the last plate added is the first one to be used, stacks follow the LIFO principle. This means that the last item you put into a stack is the first one you take out. This property makes stacks useful in situations where you want to keep track of the most recent or immediate data. Stacks are used to manage function calls and execution in programming. When a function is called, it gets added to a stack called the call stack. The function at the top of the stack is executed first, and when it completes, it is removed, allowing the next function to be executed. This mechanism helps programs remember where they left off and efficiently handle nested function calls. Stacks are handy for implementing undo and redo operations in various applications. Think of a text editor where you can undo your changes. Each change can be stored in a stack, allowing you to revert back to previous states by popping elements from the stack. Stacks are also useful for evaluating expressions, especially those involving parentheses to ensure if they're balanced or not. Lastly, stacks also play a role in recursive function calls. Recursion uses the stack to store information about each recursive call until the base case is reached. In number 3, we have queues. Queues are similar to stack, just that instead of LIFO, they follow the FIFO or first-in, first-out approach. Queues ensure that the element that enters the queue first is the first one to leave, similar to waiting in line in a ticket counter or a grocery store. Queues are commonly used for task scheduling in operating systems. When multiple tasks or processes are waiting to be executed, they are placed in a queue. The operating system ensures that each task gets its turn based on its arrival time, preventing starvation and ensuring fairness. Now number 4 would be linked lists. Linked lists also provide a flexible way to organize and manipulate data. They are like a chain where each element is connected to the next, enabling easy traversal and manipulation of data. Linked lists excel at inserting or deleting elements at any position. In a linked list, each element or node stores a reference to the next element, forming a chain. This makes it faster to insert or remove elements compared to arrays, especially when dealing with large amounts of data. Linked lists use memory efficiently because they only allocate memory for the elements elements actually present in the list. This means they can save memory compared to arrays, which require a fixed amount of memory regardless of the actual number of elements. Now number 5 would be graphs. Graphs help us understand and solve complex relationships and connections between different elements. Imagine a map showing different cities and how they are connected by roads or flights. Graphs are like maps that represent relationships and connections between various elements. They help us understand how things are related to each other, such as friends in a social network or web pages linked by hyperlinks. Graphs provide a powerful way to solve many real-world problems. For example, they can help us find the shortest route between two cities, identify the most influential person in a social network, or recommend relevant products based on user preferences. Graph algorithms enable us to analyze and solve these problems efficiently. In number 6, we have a very useful one, hash tables. Hash tables provide a fast and efficient way to store and retrieve data based on keys. Imagine you have a big library and you want to find a specific book. Instead of searching through every shelf, you consult the library's catalog, which lists the book's location based on its title or author. Hash tables work in a similar way. They use a key value pair system, where each key is associated with a value. When you need to find a specific value, the hash table quickly computes its location based on its key, leading to fast retrieval. Hash tables also have a constant time complexity, often denoted as O of 1, for retrieval and insertion operations. This means that no matter how large the hash table is, 
the time it takes to find or insert an element remains constant on average. This makes hash tables ideal for scenarios where quick access to data is crucial, such as caching, indexing, and data lookups. In number 7, we have binary search tree. Binary search trees are important because they offer a way to organize data in a hierarchical and sorted manner. This structure allows for efficient searching, insertion, and deletion operations, making it useful in various algorithms and applications that require fast data retrieval and manipulation. For example, in a file system, the directory structure can be represented using a binary search tree. Each directory is stored as a node, and the tree's sorted order facilitates quick navigation and retrieval of files and folders within the system. Now in number 8, we have recursion. Recursion allows for solving complex problems by breaking them down into smaller, more manageable sub-problems, thereby simplifying complex logic. Recursive algorithms are commonly used with data structures like trees and graphs, where the structure is inherently recursive in nature. Recursion provides an intuitive way to traverse and manipulate these structures, allowing for efficient operations and problem solving. Recursion also enables backtracking, which is useful for exploring and searching through different paths or configurations. It allows for systematic exploration of all possibilities and finding the best solution among them. In number 9, we have binary search. Binary search is important because it provides a fast and efficient way to search for a value in a sorted list. It has a logarithmic time complexity, making it highly efficient for large datasets. Binary search dramatically reduces the number of comparisons needed to find a value in a sorted list. It works by repeatedly dividing the search space in half allowing for a faster way to find the target value. This makes it much faster than searching through each element sequentially one by one. In number 10, we have different sorting algorithms, such as bubble sort, selection sort, and insertion sort. When data is sorted, searching becomes more efficient. Sorted data enables us to use techniques like binary search, which quickly identifies whether a value exists or not. Searching in sorted data is significantly faster than searching in unsorted data, especially for large datasets. These algorithms provide a foundation for understanding more advanced sorting algorithms. They introduce the fundamental concepts of comparing elements, swapping positions, and iterating through the data. They also help develop problem-solving skills and introduce concepts like time complexity and algorithm analysis. So those were the 10 data structured algorithm concepts you must be aware at any cost. That's all for the video. If you found it insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe.